we all know if we have a container and we open a hole in it, that the liquid will shoot out. But how fast does it shoot out? Well, this is a good example of an inviscid flow. And the equation that governs this is called the Bernoulli equation. This tank holds a fixed height of water, and the path this jet takes when it moves outside the tank is governed by both the speed with which it's moving and the acceleration due to gravity. The speed with which it's moving when it comes out of this jet is a function of the height of the tank, and that's described by the Bernoulli equation. A free jet is a jet that experiences no pressure gradients. This jet, as it moves through the air, isn't experiencing any viscous forces, and it's also not experiencing any pressure gradients. Because it's not experiencing any viscous forces or any pressure gradients, it moves only based on the acceleration due to gravity and its initial velocity. Now we know this jet is a free jet, and we know that for two different reasons. First of all, it's following a parabolic path, and a parabolic path is the path that an object follows when it's accelerating only because of gravity. The second thing we see in this jet is that it's neither expanding nor shrinking. Now, if a jet has a different pressure than its environment, that jet will expand or shrink. So for example, if you watch a rocket, when a rocket exhausts into the environment during the high part of an Earth orbit, you'll find that that jet will expand. And the reason for that is that the jet that's being exhausted has a much higher pressure than its environment. Because the pressure inside this jet is the same as the environment, this jet doesn't expand as it moves through space. So the path that this jet follows is actually exactly the same that a ball would follow if we threw it with the same speed from this point and just let it fall. We can estimate the speed with which the water issues into this jet by using the integral form of the Bernoulli equation. The Bernoulli equation is an inviscid flow relation that tells us how energy is exchanged between different forms, either gravitational potential energy because it's high, pressure because it's been compressed, or kinetic energy because it's moving in space. We can use the integral form of the Bernoulli equation to compare a relation between the water that's at the top of this tank, which has gravitational potential energy but no speed, and the water that's now issuing out, out of this valve, which has speed but not as much gravitational potential energy. By doing this, we can relate the speed u with which this exhausts to the original height of the tank, specifically the difference between the heights of the top of the tank and this valve. So we learned a number of things from this analysis. First of all, we learned that as we move down from the top of the tank to a lower region in the tank, the pressure goes up and the pressure varies linearly. But if we look at the speed with which fluid comes out, that varies non-linearly. It varies to the square root of the height difference. Another thing we learned is that if we open up valves at different positions, we find that these jets all issue with different speeds. Moving from the top, the speed is relatively low because the height difference from the top to the valve is low. And then as we move down to the bottom, because the height difference is bigger, the pressure here is larger. And when that gravitational energy is converted into speed, the speed we get is a, a higher value. We can also see that a pattern is formed. In fact, if you look at the top and you trace the envelope of these different jets, these jets follow a straight line. And if this flow is inviscid, then the straight line moves at 45 degrees relative to horizontal. We can see that the speed of these jets increases as we go from high to low. In fact, the speed with which these jets come out are exactly the same speed that a ball would have if I took it from the top and I dropped it. As it accelerated when it moved from top to bottom, that change in speed is precisely the difference in the speed of these jets. And the reason is because, again, gravitational potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. Now, this experiment doesn't perfectly match that theory. And the reason for that is that there's a certain amount of viscous losses in this flow. If I open up all these valves, I can see that these valves move at different speeds. I can trace this envelope, but it turns out this envelope actually isn't exactly 45 degrees. These jets don't go quite as far as I may have uh, predicted. And the reason is because this flow isn't entirely inviscid. It's primarily inviscid in the tank, but when the fluid has to move through these valves, there are viscous losses associated with the flow through the valves. So the speed with which these jets come out ends up being just a little bit slower than we would have predicted from this inviscid analysis. And in fact, this angle ends up being a little bit larger than 45 degrees. Another thing we can talk about is how we could ruin this experiment. 
But this experiment has water issuing into air, and that's chosen on purpose. It also has a tank that's much bigger than these orifices, and that's also on purpose. Because the tank is much bigger than the orifices, the fluid is moving very slowly in the tank, and it's a good approximation to assume that it's invisible. Also, because water is issuing into air, the viscosity of the air is relatively low, and we could ignore most of the viscous effects in the air. So these jets are free jets, and there's no kinetic energy of the water when it's in the tank. But we could ruin this in a couple different ways. One, we could make the tank too small. If we made the tank too small, then we wouldn't get the same results. Another thing we could do is we could replace the water with honey. And because honey is 10,000 times as viscous as water, then we would find that this flow is viscous both in the tank and outside. And the last thing we could do is instead of shooting water into air, we could shoot something that has much lower density. For example, if I fill this tank with sulfur hexafluoride, which is maybe seven times as dense as air, but nowhere near as dense as water, I could make sulfur hexafluoride jets come out, but they wouldn't fall like free jets because I couldn't model these as free and viscous jets. So when liquid rushes out of a tank, either because we poked a hole into it or because we opened a valve, it issues with a speed u that's given by the square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration times the height difference between these, uh, these different elevations. This describes the lossless conversion of gravitational potential energy at the top of the tank to kinetic energy in the jet that issues from the bottom. In the real world, viscous losses at things like valves cause the speed to be a little bit less than what's predicted by that implicit analysis. 